Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're making the Millionaire's Rusty Nail. It's going to make some people unhappy, I think. Yeah. Neither Phil or I are millionaires. No. But we like to imagine how the other half lives, right? Mm -hmm. That's practically what I do all the time. <laughs> yeah. Who would you want to be? Who, what millionaire would you want to be? I'll give you an optional. Here's, here are your choices. All right. Donald Trump. Kobe Bryant. Or is it Kobe? Kobe. Kobe. I'm thinking of the beef. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Okay, or we'd have to do a movie star then. George Clooney. George Clooney? What? Brad Pitt. You'd like to be Brad Pitt? Yeah, Brad Pitt. No, I would not like to be Brad Pitt. Or Bill Bowerman. Bill Bowerman has nothing to do with Brad Pitt. But he was a... He's dead. He, yeah. Did he die a millionaire, you think? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Nike. Well, I know, I know, but I thought he, I thought he kind of signed off on all of that to, uh, I don't know. what's the guy's name? Phil Knight. Phil Knight. No? Mm hmm We should do a waffle cocktail. Yeah, we should. For Bill Bowerman. Yeah, Bill Bowerman, uh, for his initial $1,000 investment, became a millionaire. And there was one guy, he, Phil Knight like sold it to all of his teammates. If you don't know, Phil Knight ran for Oregon. He was a runner for Bill Bowerman, legendary track coach. Just to correct you, it was pronounced Oregon. <clears throat> Sorry. Not gone. I'm it's not... gun like this. People no, mispronounce pe Wisconsin all the time, too. People, no, no, no one mispronounces <laughs> Wisconsin except people from Wisconsin. People from Wisconsin. West, West, Wisconsin. 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 People always mispronounce Oregon. Say in Oregon and Missouri. How do you say Missouri? Missouri. Yeah. See, my grandmother was Missouri? from. Well, my grandmother was from there, and she said Missouri. So well, whatever. Back to the story. He tried to sell like shares of the whole thing to get it started to all of his teammates and everything. And there's one teammate that didn't buy in on it. Ugh. And every year on the anniversary that he asked them, Phil Knight goes to his door, knocks on the door, <laughs> rips on him. Just for fun. Yeah. But that runner became a, a famous author and, and uh, so he made his own money on his own terms. So. But it wasn't Nike to begin with. It was called something else, Blue right? Blue Ribbon Sports, yeah. Blue, Blue, Blue Ribbon Sports. They sold Japanese shoes. Well, which brings us back to the thirty-year-old McAllen. Right. Now, Phil and I, for many years, were Scotch purists or Scotch snobs. Really, mm -hmm. there was a time when I wouldn't even add a drop of water to whiskey. Oh, can't do that. First time I remember, my Jackie and I were, and my first trip to Scotland, we stayed. We're going all over the place, but we stayed at this bed and breakfast in Talisker called the Tal Talisker House, owned at the time by um, this young couple from New Zealand, and it was a bed and breakfast. Nice place. So we were sitting there having a glass of Talisker. Neat. And this, these two couples came in, and they were from California. Mm -hmm. The guys went off, well, we got to use a fax machine. This was before the that electronic web. They didn't call them Mojo? <laughs> this was before the time of email. And so the girls said, he offered the, the host offered these, offered these women some Talisker, and she said, oh, do you have any orange crush you could put in it? And he said, no, we don't. And I said, good for you. I know. But you know what? I would add Orange Crush to a whiskey now. Yeah. Yeah, that because would, that would be good. we've gotten over that phase. Mm -hmm. And we're all about experimenting and trying new things. Right. Okay. Now, people are still going to kill us for what we're about to do, but we're going to do it anyway. Right. We're going to take, um, this is our Millionaire's Rusty Nail. This is what millionaires drink mm -hmm. when you and I are drinking our regular Rusty Nail. Right. If you're not a millionaire, we do have a regular Rusty Nail that you Yes. Can. <laughs> For all of us regular folk. But if you are a millionaire, you're going to want this. Now, Phil and I had to save up a lot of time to buy this. Mm -hmm. We actually bought three bottles, and we bought it at a good time. Right. Whiskey has gone like this. In the 90s, when the Japanese, when their economy was humming, it, went, it spiked up. And now the Chinese are buying all of the whiskey, so it's even more. So we were fortunate to buy it back when it was still not cheap, but it's like, oh my God, a lot cheaper than it is now. Right. But we're going to open this up. We're going to use two ounces of whiskey. We're going to use uh, three quarters ounces of the Drambuie. And this is a 15 year old Drambuie. And uh, we're going to. This is a 30 year. What did I say? I don't know if you said how long it oh, was. Oh, it's 30s. Yeah, you know. it's 30. Oh my God, the cord broke off. 
That shows you how old it is. <laughs> it might be older than 30 years. All right. I got to get the corks now. Hang on. <laughs> Why don't you talk a little bit? <clears throat> well, I think we talked enough. Had a couple of good stories in there. You know, that, this, is, this happens a lot with older whiskeys. Yeah, I can imagine. So we're going to use this zigzag corkscrew. That thing's awesome. How old would you think that thing is by looking at it? Hold it in your hand. It's nickel plated. Oh, nice. I would say made in France. Oh. <laughs> Does it have a date on it? <laughs> no. Look That's what I was looking for. I would say it's like 40 years old. 40? 50. What would you say if I told you this was from the 1890s? 1890s? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Oh my god, we're having a crisis here. The cork is now inside. Tweezer me. Ruined your... <clears throat> the thing with... Uh, we'll end up pouring it out and we'll get it out later. This is, a, this is something good to know, whether you're buying anti-cork screws or like... Pocket wat or pocket knives, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know what this thing is right here? I don't. That's a bottle opener. Oh, yeah. That's a crown cap opener. Yeah. Okay. And Painter developed a crown cap. He patented it in, in the, around 1890, 1896, something like that. But, you know, you had to make bottles to hold these crown caps. So it took a while for, for it to catch on. So if you see something with a bottle opener on it, it's mm -hmm. probably from the 20s or later. Okay. Just so you know. FYI. We're gonna pour this. Uh, we're gonna pour this out and worry about the corks later. That's All right. Good. We're gonna do two ounces of you got it. corky whiskey. You can smell that sherry, can't you? Oh yeah. All right. Thank God the Drambuie is a screw top. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of the 15-year-old Drambuie. Oh my gosh, how could you do that? So sacrilegious. All right, grab an ice cube. And um, because millionaires, I imagine, have kafar lime trees growing all over their property oh, and their yeah. private islands. Without a doubt. We're going to, uh, instead of using a lemon twist, which normally is in a rusty nail, mm -hmm. we're going to use a kafar lime leaf, which smells delicious. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that right in there. And there you have your millionaire's rusty nail. Try it, maybe. Cheers.